Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Inusor Education. Um, I would like to present to you another series of probability problems. I call it advanced probability problems. This is lecture number two, number two in this series. They're not really that advanced. Um, they're basically, again, uh, based on combinatorics and your ability to count different combinations. Um, if uh, if combinatorics present certain problems for you, I do suggest you to um, to go through the previous chapter dedicated to combinatorics of uh, of this course. And uh, the lecture is presented on unizor.com. That's part of the advanced course of mathematics for teenagers. Um, it's a free course which uh, I have started with only one purpose actually to um, to introduce you to the process of creation, process of solving certain problems, um, process of looking for the way from point A to point B, you don't really know what is the way, you just have to look for the way. That's the purpose of solving problems in, in mathematics. And in my personal view, that's the purpose of mathematics as it is uh, started in in school basically i mean whenever you're going to a higher um, levels of education there are some specialized um, parts of mathematics used in certain professions maybe or something like this but as far as the general mathematics um, i do think that solving problems is the most important part not teaching you one formula or another um, the formulas probably will be forgotten anyway but ability to solve problems will remain with you forever. All right, so these problems are dedicated to the game of poker. Well, um, basically the, the games are the beginning of the theory of probabilities. I mean, the theory of probabilities actually started as a response to certain game problems. So in this particular case, we're talking about poker and uh, it's not really the game of poker, it's rather I will, I'm, I'm using the terminology of poker to introduce you to certain mathematical problems. Now, very similar problems were introduced as part of the combinatorics. Now I'm basically repeating the same thing, but in this case it's um, based on theory of probabilities. And that's what I'm going to do. Um, Assume you have a standard deck of 52 cards. 52 cards. Uh, four different suits. You know what they are, right? It's uh, spades, uh, hearts, diamonds, and clubs, let's say. Actually, there are different names for the different suits in different languages for different people, but I'm using this Mm, which relatively standard in the United States and Europe, I guess. Now, every suit has um, cards of different ranks. Uh, the ranks are from 2 to 10, Jack, Queen, King, and Ace. 13 ranks in each suit, right? So that makes it 13 times 452. Now, the dealer gives you five cards. Now, these five cards um, can actually form certain combinations. And what I'm going to do right now is to calculate the probability of certain combinations. Right up front, without changing any cards, just uh, pure combinations, uh, randomly chosen five cards out of the deck of 52 cards like I just described. So, the combination number one is four of a kind. Now, what is four of a kind? If you have five cards, then four of a kind means you have four different um, cards of the same rank. Let's say you have nine of spades, nine of hearts, nine of diamonds, nine of, sorry, nine of clubs and um, the fifth card can be anything basically any other card let's say it's 
know, ace of spades. Doesn't really matter. So this is the example of a combination which is called uh, four of a kind. Now, what's the probability to have this combination? Let's just think about it. Well, again, let's approach this from the theory standpoint. When, the, when we're talking about probability, and this is definitely an example of a discrete probability, um, because there are only finite number of outcomes, what is our sample space? The experiment is we get five cards out of the deck of 52. And this is a completely random experiment. And when I'm saying random without specifying how random, that actually means it's all the, prob uh, all the different outcomes have exactly the same probability. So the, what is the number of outcomes? Well, if I'm choosing five cards out of 52, or I'm given five cards out of 52, the number of combinations is this. So we have a set of five cards out of 52 is an elementary event. And we have this many elementary events, number of combinations of five cards out of 52, which means that the probability of each uh, particular combination of five cards is this. Now, event which we are interested in is, is having four cards of the same rank and the fifth something else. So the question is, how many different combinations of elementary events, each of them having this probability, constitute our event? Well, that's actually very uh, simple to calculate. First, we have to choose which is the rank of these four cards. Because if we choose the rank, it completely defines uh, the four cards out of these five. Let's say we choose nine, or we choose ace, or we choose two. So how many different choices? We have 13 different ranks. So we have 13 different choices for the rank of this card. And that completely defines four cards out of five, because there are only four suits, right? Now, the fifth card, can be anything. Now, if I have chosen four, how many choices do I have for the fifth card? Well, 52 minus four, we have 48, which means that with each of these 13 choices for my four cards, I have 48 cards for um, the choice of the fifth card. And so that number is, this number is the number of elementary events, number of sets of five cards, which constitute my event. And since each of them has this probability, the total probability of my event, which is, full, uh, which is four, four of a kind, this is the probability of four of a kind. Next. Next is full house. Now, full house, sometimes it's called 3 plus 2. Now, what it means is uh, we have three cards of one particular uh, rank. Let's say 9 diamond, 9 9 <laughs> nine um, clubs and uh, nine hearts, for instance. And two cards, completely different uh, rank, but the same rank among themselves. Let's say it's uh, uh, king of spades and king of diamond. So three of one rank, three and two of another rank. That's what makes a full house. All right, now exactly the same logic. The total number of different elementary events, as we were saying before, is the same. It will be always the same for all our problems. And the probability will be one over this, obviously, of each elementary event. Now the question is, how many elementary events constitute this particular event? Well, let's just think about it. 
first of all, we should choose one of 13 different ranks for this. Now, we have 13 different choices. Now, out of the remaining 12 ranks, we have to choose the rank for the pair, right? So, that's number 12. So, we have 13 choices of rank here and 12 choices for rank here. Now, as soon as we have chosen the rank 9 and king, now we have to choose 3 cards out of 4 of that particular rank, right? So, number of choices is number of combinations from 4 by 3. And for this guy, for the pair, we again need to choose two out of four kings. So that's number of combinations from four by two. And that is the total number of different combinations, different elementary events, which comprise the event which we are interested in. So this should be divided by 52 uh, number of combinations from 52 to 5 and that's the probability I mean obviously you can go and calculate exactly what is this and this and this number but I'm not going to to, to waste my time on this this is a simple arithmetic actually right and let's go to the next case next case is A straight now what is straight now straight is when you have five cards ranked sequentially one after another for instance you have two of something three of something four of something five of something and six of something or you can have, um, let's say, 10, jack, uh, queen, king, and ace. Or, actually, there is one small detail. Ace can be both the most uh, uh, senior rank and the least senior rank, which means ace, two, three, four, and 5 is also a valid straight. I mean, maybe some uh, casinos are not allowing this, but in, in my casino, this is also a valid combination as a straight. Now, the suits are not important here. However, there is one exception. If all of them are of the same suit, that's a different combination. It's not just a straight. It's called, uh, how is it called? Flush and uh, Royal Flush or something like this. I don't remember. It's a much, much more uh, rarely occurring combination. And uh, that's why it's supposed to be excluded from the combinations which we are considering as a straight. So straight means that not all of them are of the same suit. All right. So how many different elementary events comprise this one well first of all we have to establish what is our um, highest rank in this particular uh, group or the lowest if you wish doesn't really matter question is how many of them because we have to really determine how many groups by rank we have so we can let's say we top uh, with ace, that's one. Then we can top with a king, right? King, queen, queen, jack, ten, and nine. Or we can start with a queen, jack, ten, nine, eight, etc. And the very last one would be this one. So, the, the, the uh, highest rank can be uh, ace, king, 
queen, jack, ten, uh, it can be nine and eight and seven and six and five. We cannot have the highest four because there is not enough predecessors to form a group of five cards. I mean, three, two, ace as a one, but that's it. There is no more, right? So starting from five and up to ace, we can have as the uh, top ranking member of the group. Now, how many of them? Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, jack, queen, uh, king, and ace. Ten. So we have ten different choices for the top ranking card in a group. Ten. That's important. So we have determined that we have ten different choices for the top ranking card which means top ranking determines rank of all of those down there underneath I mean if top ranking is 9 it determines the rank of the next one which is 8 and then 7 and 6 and 5 and five. all right so we have 10 different choices for the top ranking which means 10 different choices for set of ranks sequential ranks from 5 to 8 all right now since we know the rank, we have five cards, right? We know their ranks, since we have already chosen the top one. How many combinations do we have of these five cards if I have already determined their rank? Well, we have five cards, we have four choices, four different suits for one card, four for another, four for the third, for the fourth, and for the fifth. So we have four different choices for each of those and I have to put it to fifth degree because we have five different cards and each one has four different suits so once the top card is chosen I have determined basically the ranks of all other five cards and since each rank can be represented by one of four cards one of four different suits I'm multiplying by four to the fifth degree however I did not take into account the fact that all of them cannot be of the same suit. So let's just subtract from this number all the different um, uh, combinations of sequential ranking cards, five cards, but of the same suit. Now, how many of them? Well, again, there are ten different variations for the top card, but now for all of them we have to have exactly the same suit. Right, so all five cards should be of the same suit. Which one? Doesn't matter which one, as long as it's not the same, right? That's what we have to um, uh, count as a, as a real straight. So whenever they're all of the same suit, and there are four suits, which means I have to multiply it by four. That's the number which we have to exclude from this number to get the real number of straight. So these are the number of different elementary events, sets of five cards out of 52 which correspond to our condition of having exactly sequential ranks uh, and being at least one of them should be different in suits from another. And obviously if we're talking about probability we have to divide it by number of combinations from 52 by 5. All right, now my last problem is of a kind. Now the first one if you remember was four of a kind. It was a little bit easier because as soon as I chose the rank I have basically established completely my four cards out of five and then all I had to do is multiply by the number of the rem remaining cards. This is just very much the same um, but I have to really take into account a little bit more freedom. Well, Three of a kind, that means I have to choose, let's say, nine diamonds, nine, again, <laughs> nine hearts, nine spades, and then I have to choose two others, but they're not supposed to be the same, and they're not supposed to be one of these, because if they're one of these, if it's another nine, it would be four of a kind. 
if they are the same among themselves, let's say two kings, it would be full house, three plus two, right? And that's not the same combination. So I need different ones. For instance, uh, I can have king of spades and ace of diamonds, something like this. Now that would be three of a kind. Again, let's start with this group. We have obviously, we have to choose which rank we are uh, dealing with um, uh, in this group of three, three cards. Well, there are 13 different ranks, so obviously I have to start with this. That's my freedom of choice. I can choose any rank for these three. Now, how about their suits? I, I need only three. There are four different suits. So there are a uh, number of combinations from four by three, and that's the number of different sets of nines, for instance, in this case, which I can get from the deck. It can be diamonds, hearts, spades, or it can be diamonds, club spades, it can be whatever. I mean, there are different combinations. So, three out of four I'm choosing. Now what's important is, these are supposed to be of different rank than this, and different among themselves. Now, how many ranks are have left? Well, one is taken for this, so we have 12 different ranks. And I need two different ranks among these. So, what's my freedom of choice? Well, I can choose number of combinations from 12 by 2 as different pairs of ranks, right? So, now I know that these two cards have different ranks. Now, what's the choices of the suit for each one of them? Well, quite frankly, I don't care even if they are the same suit or different suit, as long as their ranks are different. So, which means I have four choices for this and four choices for that. So, I have to multiply it by four square. And that's the number of elementary events which comprise my three of a kind. And they have to divide it by number of combinations from 52 by, two by 5. And that's the probability I'm looking for. All right, now, what I suggest you to do is all these numbers, obviously they're all convertible into factorials, etc., so you can basically calculate. Just as an example, what is this? This is 13, this is 4 uh, factorial divided by 3 factorial and 1 factorial, this is 12 factorial divided by 2 factorial and 10 factorial, this is 16, this is 52 factorial divided by uh, 5 factorial and 47 factorial. So do all the necessary uh, cancellation, like in this particular case, for instance, 4 factorial and 3 factorial, obviously 1 factorial is going out, 3 factorial is number of uh, one, 1 times 2 times 3, and 4 is the same thing but 4, so I'm leaving this thing. Now, 12 and 10, so I have 12 and 11 here. Now, 2 factorial is 2, so I can just leave 6 here. So that's what I have in my numerator. In my denominator, I have, um, now, if I divide this, uh, I will have 52, 51, 50, 49, and 48 right without any factorials and 5 factorial I'm putting here 5 factorial is 1 2 3 4 5 which is what 120 so that's the number you can just take the calculator and calculate it precisely what it is and you will get the probability of full house I think it's very educational to know in decimal, actually, how small or how big this probability is. Obviously, it's between 0 and 1. question is how big is, um, relatively to your understanding, what, what's the probable event. All right? So, that's it. That's all the problems which I wanted to present to you right now. I do suggest you to do this again. I do suggest you to go through combinatorics 
chapter if you forgot it, uh, if you're not feeling comfortable in combinatorics, go to the combinatorics chapter of this course, very educational. And um, well, that's it for today. Thank you very much and good luck.